Of all honor, all glory, all praise, how are you living? Are you living in a way that reflects this? Or are you far from God? Uh, uh, are, you, are you saying there is no God? Are you saying, uh, you know, I don't need uh, that religion, you know? Well, the fact is, everybody's religious. Everybody has a religion. Religion, you know, the, the only difference is, uh, if you're not a born-again Christian, then your religion is, is yourself. It's you. You're worshiping yourself. You've, you've chosen a way that's convenient for you. And, you know, maybe it's worked out this far for you. And, but there's an end to that way. There's an end to that road. Uh, hey, God bless him, my man. There, there's a way that, that, that man thinks is right in his own eyes. You know, but if it's not following Jesus, if not seeking the Lord, if it's not trusting him and yielding to him and walking humbly you know then then we're walking in pride when, when we don't want jesus it's automatically it's pride we're being prideful we don't we don't want to you know whatever we whatever lies in our head you know it's the our enemy you you we all have a common enemy all of us have a common enemy you know god but god gave us the victory over that enemy you know the, the there's a kingdom of darkness i got i want you you younger people to know this there is a kingdom of darkness but the kingdom of light see god made light and darkness so, and the devil's defeated you know the devil is just a fallen angel god bless you man good to see you. uh the devil's just a fallen angel and pride was what caused his fall the devil wanted to be worshiped like god you know he he was a beautiful mighty angel he was he was radiant you know he was brilliant he worshiped but he wanted to be worshiped like god and what did the devil tell eve he said uh you won't die he said you'll you'll be like god that was the temptation you know the devil doesn't care if we worship him he just wants to make sure we don't worship god that we don't worship jesus that we don't believe so the devil will do everything he can to distract you some of you might believe in christ but where's your faith uh maybe you're not bearing any fruit maybe you're struggling with sin you're not walking in the victory you know and you're making excuses for it you know you're, you're trying to cover it up but god sees it all you know, the, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. God sees it all. We can't hide from God. You know, God sees it all. That's a record that's being made of our lives. It's a record of your life, your life, my life. It's in heaven. And we can't erase, you know, that record. We can't go into the, the file cabinet of the Lord and pick our file. And, and we can't shred that paper, you know. It's not going to work that way. You know, but the good news is Jesus Christ paid our debt. You know, some of you are going to come out of this college with uh, debt. You know, what, what if someone just came up to you and said, you know what, I want to wipe that debt clean. Uh, I'm, here to, I'm here to make you debt free. I want you to be debt free. You know, that's what Jesus did. He came to pay for our debts. You know, he came to forgive us our sins. God bless you. Praise God. He came to forgive our sins. We can't wash that sin off. I, there's not, right, there's not enough bleach. There's not enough soap to wash our sins off it's only by the blood of christ by the blood of the lamb we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony you know do you have a word do you have a testimony it only comes by the spirit of god in you that's what god wants you all to know he wants to he wants each of you to be a temple for the holy spirit you're either a temple for the holy spirit or you're a temple for the devil it's one or the other it's either god or it's it's the devil it's black and white you know it's not relative it's not uh, 50 shades or gray. It's not a, it's black or white with God. You know, we get to choose. You know, you get to choose. You know, I want to do my own thing. And, you know, I, I don't know about this stuff. I'm not sure about it. You know, God can heal your shoulder. In Jesus' name, pray that you get healed. Oh, yeah. I had 25 years of shoulder problems, and they're gone. They're, they're gone, man. Just believe. And I'll, I'll pray for you, bro. I'm going to see you again. I think so. And I'll, I'll pray for you when you're ready. He'll, he'll take that pain off, man. God made us. God bless you, man. God bless you. Amen. I've, I've seen people cured from stage four cancer when the doctor said, you got a month to live. And that person is still here eight years later. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, that's the power of God. He is the great physician. You know, some of you might be going to medical school. You know, that's not a bad thing. You know, we need doctors. We need, we need healers. You know, but, you know, the medicine that comes from man doesn't compare to the medicine from Jesus, you know. Men, men have not invented a vaccine for sin. There's no vaccine for sin. 
Jesus Christ is the cure for sin. Sin, is, sin has destroyed more people than any, any pandemic, any, anything that might be coming soon again. I, I hate to break this to you, it's going to come again. <laughs> You're all going to have to wear face masks again. I mean, that kind of, that was, that was not fun. You know, being fearful, you know, that the, the world wants us to be fearful, to be afraid, you know. But God says he's given us not a spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. God has given you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. God is love. God bless you, young lady. God is love. God bless you, young man. God is love. Love is not love. You know, God is love. You know, there's, there's a community of, of people that say love is love, but love without God is not love. It's like saying water is water without water. I mean, it's not. You're not, you're not going to drink water without water. <laughs> you need H2O to drink water. You know, love without God is not love. It's just our flesh. Our flesh can't love like God can love, you know. Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna lose my patience without Jesus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start looking for my own self-interest without Jesus, you know. But He laid it all down. Christ laid it all down at the cross, man, for His enemies. He said, "Love even your enemies." Can you imagine loving your enemies? Can you imagine loving the say, uh, saying, "Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do." To the very men that were mocking you, scourging you, whipping you, uh, beating you. And then nailing you to a cross. And can you imagine that kind of love that says, Father, forgive them even. Forgive them even, for they know not what they do. I mean, that's supernatural love. Uh, you know, and you can know that love. You know, you can know that love. Well, what happens, though, is a lot of people seek love in other places uh, from other sources. They don't go to the source of love. They go to something else. And it's, it's always going to leave you unsatisfied. It's not going to fill you up. It's not going to fulfill you because God made us that way. God made you and me to desire him, you know, to, to seek him, to know him, to walk in his love, his mercy, his grace. But here's, here's the problem. <clears throat> we all have a sinful nature, right? I mean, we all, we all, we all uh, have a limit, you know. Some of us, it's a really small limit. You know, we're, we care to a point without Jesus. When, when you have Christ in your life, you're going to start caring the way God cares. You're going to care for people the way God cares, right? And, and, and without Christ, you're just going to care about yourself. You're going to be self-interested. Uh, the friends you're with are going to be like you. And then uh, the friendships don't last. They fall apart because you surround yourself with people, like-minded people, that are not walking in Christ. Even the Christians, uh, they struggle with this. You know, even, just becoming a Christian doesn't magically, everything's uh, just like a fairy tale. It's actually quite the opposite because your flesh is going to be dying continually. When you become a Christian, your flesh is a, in this continual process of dying and crucifying the flesh every day. Jesus Christ said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. This is what every Christian is called to. Every Christian is called to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let me see how the pain that you've been feeling can't compare to the joy that's coming. Praise God. Romans 8, 18. Amen. God bless you. Here, take a card. Reach out anytime. Okay. God bless you guys. So, yeah, there, I know there's Christians out here, and, uh, and but there's a lot of non-Christians, and Christ just means you belong to him. You, you are of him. He, but does he, does he say that? There's a lot of people that say they identify as Christian. Maybe they grew up in a family. Their mom and dad was Christian. They, went, they, they were forced to go to church, and maybe even water baptized, but they, they, they don't want any of that, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want the, I don't want all that, you know, religious stuff, I want to kind of do my own thing, I want to figure it out for myself, and a lot of you do that in college, and then uh, what happens in college, a lot of you end up doing a lot of things you know you shouldn't be doing, and, uh, you know, it might seem fun for a minute, but then it, it kind of gets old, and some people flunk out of college because they, they, they end up smoking weed too much, or drinking too much, or they end up, you know, getting wrapped up with their social life too much, and then the grades are going to go down the tube. I mean, that's what happens, you know, when, when, when you're following rebellion and sin, it's kind of pass-fail with Jesus, with, with pass-fail. The good news is he passed the test for you. So all you need to do is, is turn to Jesus. You're an automatic pass. Can you imagine, um, how many of you right now in your classes, if you could pass right now and have the knowledge of that, w would you choose that? Would you choose an automatic A+, plus? And you have the knowledge of, of what they're trying to teach you. That's what Jesus wants to give you. He wants to give you his grace, the grace of God, the goodness of the Lord. Is It doesn't compare to anything else. It doesn't. I mean, I mean you, can go to, you, you, you can accomplish all these things. You can uh, you know, get far in your career. You can, you can uh, have all these certificates on your wall. And you can have all these awards. And 
you know, all these accomplishments of, look at me, I'm, I'm such a, a accomplished person. And then, uh, but, you, but you're not in Christ. Well, I mean, what was it for? It was, it was just kind of vanity. It was just, you're just kind of exalting yourself. You're puffing yourself up. And usually that's done to over, overcompensate for low self-esteem, the overachievers, perfectionists. You know, I was an overachiever. Uh, I was, I had low self-esteem. I had real low self-esteem. It came from uh, my, my upbringing. And my parents didn't mean to give me low self-esteem. It just ended up that way. You know, my parents did the best they could. But God, he, he's, a, he's the best father. You know, if you choose God the father to be, God wants you to know he's your good father. You become a son of God. You become a daughter of God. And then you're walking in that relationship with, with God the father. The only way to walk in that is through Christ the son. He said he's the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No one comes to the father but by me. Jesus said this. So he is the way. There's no other way. He is the truth. There's no other truth. He is the life. For no, no life comes except from him. And he came to give life and life more abundantly. He wants you to have an abundant life. And that abundant life is simply being in the presence of the Lord as his a born again, a new creature, a spiritual. Your spirit, you have a spirit inside you. You have a soul inside you. You know, but, but your spirit, man, needs to seek the Holy Spirit of God. It needs to walk with the Spirit. It has to have the Holy Spirit of God in you. Praise God. Jesus Christ, he, he came to redeem. He came to heal you. He wants to take all your anxieties away from you. Will, will you let him? Will you let Jesus love you? Will you let him lead you? Will you let the Holy Spirit guide you? Will you let the Holy Spirit of God comfort you? You got to seek God. I mean... When we see God, we're automatically uh, uh, humble. You know, when I got in that argument, God bless you. How are you? Do you need prayer for anything? Sorry. Do you need prayer? Yeah. I'm going to need my buddy. Yeah. I'm not sure. What's your name? It's okay. Father God, just pray for the sister. Right now, in Jesus' name, just pray that whatever anxiety it is that she has, she just place it in your hand, Lord, and she knows that you have her. And it says that nothing can separate us from your love. Uh, in John 10, it says that no sheep can be taken out of your hand, the Father's hand, and the Son's hand. Lord. So she belongs to you. Uh, everything that she does, uh, you know, let her know that if she if she just prays and, and gives it up to you and says, Lord, your will be done. This, you know, you want to, she can she can give you her her heart desires, Lord. But like Jesus even said this at uh, Gethsemane, He said, "Did Father, you take this cup away from me, but not my will, your will be done." Uh, just let her know that that little simple prayer will will automatically position her so she's not looking at, at her situation, she's not looking at the or giving even thought to, to the, the thoughts that it's not going to work out, it's going to be a disaster. All those fears, just fear. So we cast out fear right now. We're, out of her, Lord. You said that perfect love cast out all fear, Lord. The perfect love is Jesus. Lord. I just pray that she, um, she, we all have to walk through this. I'm, I walk through this all the time. We, we're all we're walking the same thing, Lord. So if she's going through this, I'm going through this with her, Lord. She's not alone, Lord. She's, uh, so she's going to have the victory today, Lord. She's going to be walking in peace. She's going to be, uh, whatever it was that was bothering her, whatever situation that it seems like it's going to go a bad way, it's going to go the right way because she's going to choose you. And you know everything, Lord. And we don't see more than one or two steps ahead, Lord. So just pray over her and how you give her mind perfect peace from head to toe, Lord. And you give her the joy uh, of being in your presence, Lord. Let her know that she, she um, that it's going to be okay. That's all she needs to hear. It's going to be no, okay. It's going to be better than okay. So just pray over this. We pray over the sister in Jesus' name. We pray over to protect your mind, protect your heart, Lord. Now, we're all weak, Lord, but it says that in, your, in our weakness, your power is perfected. Even the Apostle Paul had weaknesses. He rejoiced in the weaknesses. So have let, let my sister see that she can rejoice in her weaknesses. She doesn't have to have it all figured out. It's okay if she doesn't have it all figured out, Lord. You have it all figured out. All she needs is to turn to you and pray to you and say, I'm here. The Lord, have the way. Lord, and even if it doesn't go the way I thought it should, Lord, I know that you need, you know better, Lord, and I know that whatever you have behind us is going to be even better than what I think I can imagine. Uh, even if you're going to provide everything. It's not going to be a failure. I'm not going to be a failure. I'm a success. I'm, a, I'm victorious. You're a bride of, of Jesus to guide you. He wants you to have your head of hell time. He wants you to be confident in him. Uh, so we just rebuke any thoughts. Uh, anything that anyone else has spoken of in her life, Lord, we rebuke any harsh words for her family. If they said anything, any pressures for her family, 
Lord, that she would forgive them, Lord, that she wouldn't have that burden on herself, Lord, uh, that's coming from uh, any, any any relatives, Lord, that they, mean, they might mean well, but they might be driven by fear too, Lord. So we just protect that fear in her family. Uh, anything that's trying to be spoken against her, Lord, we, we cancel that out in the name of Jesus. We fill her with her Holy Spirit, Father God, that she would just be uh, just full of joy, just fill her with joy, Lord. Full of, full of joy today, just fill her with peace. Let her, let her be at peace. You, want, you said that you want us to, to be in green pastures. You're gonna, uh, we will not fear evil. You're with us. Like Psalm 23 says, you're with us. You're with her. Uh, you're going to always be with her. She's going to always be with you, Lord. And uh, whatever the situation is, it's, it's going to go. She's not going to be able to explain it. She's going to go the way it's going to go in victory. Lord. Everything's going to go. I pray that everything she touches, Lord, gives you the honor and the glory. And that she walk in that victory because you're the one that's victorious, Lord. You're going to wipe away every tear from her eyes one day, Lord. We're going to be here, Lord. So we have the hope in you. We trust you. She's going to trust you in everything. She's going to pray to you more if she hasn't prayed to you enough, Lord. And she's going to let the Holy Spirit guide her in those prayers, Lord. And uh, if she hasn't been in the Word, uh, give her a hunger for your Word, Lord. Just fall in love with you, Jesus. And, and let her give her that power so that she can defeat all the... We have an enemy that's always trying to harass us, Lord. So we repeat that. In Jesus' name, Lord. Lord. It's gonna be alright. Oh, I got you. I gave me all the yeah. All the way? Yeah, praise God. I know the pressure. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. But but he's got it. Just go, you know, this is too much weight. I need your That's it. It's that act. It's that act. When it comes on you again, because it's gonna come back. It's gonna try to come. And when it does, you say, nope, I'm, I'm giving it to you. And it will. It will. And you're gonna be Bless you so much. Reach out anytime. Yeah. God bless you. So I, I agree. We had we had some students here that walked by and one of them gave me the the wrong finger for Jesus is number one. They gave me the wrong can you imagine can you know what finger that was? The wrong one? Yeah. Yeah. The right finger for Jesus is number one is, is children. Children. I'm old enough to be your dad, older than most of your dads. The the the, do you give your? Would you give your dad the middle finger? Some of you probably have given your dad the middle finger. <laughs> I don't know, because you're wicked. I don't know. I mean, do, some of you have cursed your parents out. Do you know that that's sin? It's sin to dishonor your parents, you know. Some of you are brats. <laughs> We're not brought up uh, in the ways of the Lord. You're, you're brought up in the ways of Satan. Right? So we had we had uh, I had some students here. You know they always do this when the camera gets switched or turned off, and, and that's okay. God sees it. You know my camera could be switched out, but God saw it. And, and I don't want I don't hold anything against people that give me the wrong finger. For God is number one. God is number one. Hallelujah. They were just confused. They used the wrong finger. That's all that happened. You know don't God. Guys, don't ever give Jesus the middle finger. You're going to have to give an account to him for that. It says you'll, you know, we're going to have to give an account for every idle word spoken. When, when you express a word, when you text somebody, when you write a, a, a comment, when you throw up the wrong finger for Jesus is number one, you're going to have to answer not to me. You're going to have to answer to God. And I pray that my Lord is merciful. As he was merciful with me, I was, I was a, I hated Jesus most of my life. I couldn't stand that name. I couldn't stand Christians. You know, and that's because I had it all twisted up. I had, my thoughts were, were wicked thoughts, you know. I didn't, I didn't understand God. I judged God. Who am I to judge God? Who are you to judge God? But we judge, right? Everybody judges. I mean, you just judge that it's safe to walk across the street. You judged when you put on the clothing you put on. You judged coming at UNT was a good choice. You judged picking the classes you're in, the major you're in. You made a judgment. You made a judgment, so everybody judges. And the Bible never says not to judge. It says not to judge hypocritically. It says not to judge hypocritically. You know, well, how do we judge? How do we make a, a discernment? How do we make an assessment? You know, a te your teacher's going to judge you. They're going to say you got an A, a B, a C, or you flunked, right? <laughs> Based on your test scores, you're... Right? Your teacher's going to judge you, right? They're going to judge your, your, your progress, your work, your quizzes, your tests. You know, we all judge. The difference is uh, God is, God's called the, the Christians to judge righteously before his eyes. 
the only way that we can judge righteously is if, it's, if it lines up with his word. And if we don't know the word of God, then we should keep our mouths shut and learn the word of God. Right? Amen, sir. Yep, praise God. And then, and then, you know what, something interesting is going to happen. If you really start to study the word of God, you're not going to want to judge anybody. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to say, uh, God's going to judge you, and I don't even judge you. I don't judge myself. I don't judge myself. This is what Paul said. Paul said, what do I have that other men judge me? I don't even judge them. I don't judge myself. The Lord would judge us all. Tupac said this. Sorry. You're good. Tupac said this. He said, uh, only God can judge me. You know, the famous saying that had t-shirts with him. And in a way, he was absolutely, ultimately, God is the one that's going to decide, right? But, uh, you know, Jesus came to, so that you would not be uh, guilty, that you would not be condemned. Because Jesus came to free you from the condemnation. Jesus Christ came uh, so you would not have the wrath of God poured out on you. He, he came to separate you out from the judgment seat of God that you would be on the mercy seat. There were two seats, the judgment seat and a mercy seat in the Ark of the Covenant. Do you guys want the mercy seat of God or the judgment seat of God? You know, if you had a choice, would you choose the judgment and the wrath of God or would you choose the mercy and the grace? Judgment. Well, the judgment goes to hell. And hell is uh, eternal torment. Uh, no rest, just torment forever and ever and ever and ever on fire uh, weeping there's nothing about weeping in hell there's not now can you imagine if you were in a place where everybody's just weeping all the time everybody's weeping it's uh, 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 it's just weeping suffering in hell i mean think about it it might seem silly because you're in a, you know you're, you guys giving you the grace of a sunny day we're in texas kind of warm but it, this is a cold day in hell this doesn't compare. I mean, hell is a place of torment, of fire. It exists, folks. God said it. I mean, it's not a fairy tale. It's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus was invented by the Germans. It's a mocking, mocking God. So is the Easter Bunny. It's all, all these pagan traditions were designed. The Catholic Church is full of pagan idolatry. Uh, Mary was a, another assimilation of Ishtar. She was a goddess of fertility. That's why they have Mary with the baby. It's just another version of a distraction from God. The actual Mary that, that, that was blessed, she recognized Jesus was Lord. She said she recognized that when the angel told her what she was going to give birth to, the blessing. She's blessed forever. Her name is blessed, but we don't worship Mary. Mary saved nobody. Mary can't intercede for us. We have one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. He's the only mediator. He's the only one that we overcome by his blood, not Mary's blood. She, Mary wasn't on the cross. Mary was a sinner and she needed a Lord. Just like all of us are sinners and need, need a Lord and Savior. You know, I, I can't wash my sins off myself before a holy God. Jesus Christ did, though. You can wash that sin, whatever that is. That's what repentance means. Repentance means more than you feel bad about it. God bless. It means, uh, yeah, you should feel bad, you're, you're, but you go to Jesus, you ask him to forgive you, and it doesn't like, hey, I got a pass, I can go do it again. No, you didn't really repent. Repent means that you don't want to do it again, and you, you recognize that Christ is the only one that can keep you from, from going back to that. There's a lot of sins I used to just be a slave to, and even after becoming a Christian, there's a lot of sins that over time I had to learn it wasn't in my power, it was only in his power. I couldn't stop lying except by Christ. I couldn't stop lusting except by Christ. I couldn't stop being angry except by Christ. I mean, it's awesome to, to need him that much, to be in that relationship with Jesus. That's what he wants to be. And he wants to, he wants to understand he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother in times of adversity. Your best friend's going to let you down. You're, 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 if you might have the greatest mom and dad, but they cannot love you like Jesus can. They can't. And ultimately, they can't lead you to heaven. Their faith, your mom's faith, your dad's faith, they might be Christians, but they, their faith, we all have to stand alone before God on our own. If they're good parents, they, they would have led you to, to church. They would have led you to the Word of God. They would have you know, led you in the way that you should go so you won't depart from it. They would, let, they would have taught you the, the love of Christ. They would have demonstrated it through their life, their example to you, their sacrifice, their patience, their love, their mercy. They would have prayed. See, uh, the, the, uh, the men and women of God that are married you know, before God, the true, truly, uh, 
it's for the glory of the Lord. And it's a beautiful process when you marry, when a man of God marries a woman of God, it's a beautiful thing because you're married to Christ and, and, and Christ gets magnified and you both become conformed. You both become perfected in a way that you can't uh, otherwise. And then you have children and then they get blessed by this, by God, because God's blessed them and now that blessing goes on to the children because God says that he blesses to a thousand generations all those who love him. A thousand, that's a lot of generations. But, it, but his wrath is on, on not that many, praise God, his mercy is greater than his judgment, but it's to the, third or the second or third generation for those who don't fear him. Don't fear him. The wicked, uh, that's what God, that's the Bible says the wicked are those who don't fear God. God bless you. Fearing God is a good thing. It, it's, a, uh, it's not a bad thing. I used to struggle with this. I used to say, why should I fear God? It didn't make sense to me. Why should I fear God? I just didn't understand. I'm not going to fear God. Why should I fear God? I didn't get it. That was, that was the carnal man. You know, I, my, my flesh mind cannot comprehend. The flesh can't comprehend the things of heaven. But the reason we must fear God, Jesus said this. He said this, don't fear them who can kill your body, but afterward can do nothing with your soul. Jesus Christ said, I'll tell you who to fear. Fear him who can destroy both your body and cast it into hell. There's only one. God bless you. There's only one that can do this. That's Jesus. Because he has the gates to hell and death in his righteous right hand. He defeated sin and death for all who believe. Not for everybody. This is not a pass for everybody. The atheist will not be in heaven. All right? the, 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 the Buddhist will not be in heaven. The Hindu will not be in heaven. The, the Muslim will not be in heaven. The Jew without Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, will not be in heaven. But you've got to be born again. You have to have a spiritual birth. This is what John said in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. To whom was given the revelation, the one that Christ loved. God bless you. Good to see you, man. The one that God, that Jesus loved, John. You know, all the other apostles, they got martyred. They died for the Gospel. That's conviction. You know why they died? Because they loved the Lord. They lived for Him. They knew that what was promised to them would far surpass any momentary suffering in this world. What are you living for today? Are you living for yourself or for Jesus? Are you living for your mom? Your mom should be leading you to Christ. Not witchcraft. You know, witchcraft is really big nowadays. It's everywhere. It's, it's like a no big deal. It's, you know... I, I, was in, I was involved in witchcraft a lot. I was a warlock when I was younger. Astral projecting. Talking to the dead. Yes, sir. Confirmed. Yeah, not, not made up. Confirmed. I come from a long line of witchcraft in Colombia, South America. I have relatives still there that are sought after. People will travel internationally to go to these witches and warlocks. Divination, mostly. Div fortune tellers. You know, tarot card readers. Why do people go to tarot cards? Because they're fearful of the future. They're, they they want to control the outcome. They want to know ahead of time what, what's going to happen. Uh, am I going to be... Am I going to be, is, uh, is that, uh, I'm going to have the relationship? Is that person going to love me? Am I going to be rich? Uh, what, what is it? I want to know.